Revelation 18, 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Call Halal Yahweh Bashan Awashai by Shem Rakakodash. Double honors unto the apostles, double honors unto the elder bishops. Salutations to all my fellow laborers that do this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth that be like unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners among the heathens that look like the heathens, and to the aquaf that are listening and learning to you, I say shalom. And this is a, another video that was done by uh, Dana uh, Stevens here. And by the way, this is your brother Malcolm, if anyone who might be who might be new. Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago. And uh, basically he's talking about Trump and white evangelists. This is the same Trump and, and, you know, and how those that believe in Trump, those that don't believe in Trump. But, you know, as I read that scripture, whether you're Democrat or you're Re Republican, there are two, two, two wings of the same hateful bird. And, and until these people who, and as you can clearly see, I love it when Dana wears white, you know, he's got on a white t-shirt. Um, you can clearly see that his skin is red. He's, he, you know, um, I'm on the fence with him though, because I, I, sometimes I think he's an agent and sometimes I think he may be sincere, but when the angels come, you know, he's going, they're going to, uh, di differentiate between the wheat and the tares because the wheat and the tares are going to be gathered up the wheat into the, uh, into the barn, you know, which is the, the, the chariots. And then the, and then the tares are going to be put in bundles and burned. So if he's, uh, you know, if he's a, if he's an Edomite, then he will be dealt with accordingly. If he's an uh, if he's an Israelite foreigner that's scattered among them that look like the heathen, then then he'll be dealt with accordingly. All right, he he'll, he will be uh, eventually received back into the fold, get his melanin back, and you know, and this that and the other. But uh, he's going on talking about this Trump, and. And, you know, but they're not explaining the fact, you know, he's talking to his white evangelical friends. All right. But if they're actually Edomites, so there's no such thing as white. That's a social construct that they made up. All right. They secured it in 1681 in law first in 1681. Um, and they've been using that term um, lawfully ever since. So it is really unlawful because there's no such thing as a white person. All right. That's a completely and total made up construct. The same as a. Uh, black and, and 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 all these and brown and all those things that's that's color doesn't determine your nationality you have the seed of your father does regardless of what your outward appearance looks like a truth which they deny just like they don't want to bring out the fact that we truly are the you know the people of the book you know and he'll always talking about his his black brothers and sisters you know being the, the true tribes but you know I, i've rarely heard him mention the uh the northern kingdom which would be the so-called hispanics and natives of the the americas but uh, let's uh, let him speak a little bit, and then I'm just going to go into some scriptures to solidify who and what the kingdom of heaven is, is made up of, because the kingdom of heaven is going to be here on earth, and it will be ruled over by who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, uh, who is Yahweh Shai, uh, by, you know, and by King David and the rest of the 144,000. Because if you're in the spirit and you understand the scriptures, you would know that David and Peter are, are the same person. Peter, uh, 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 King David came back as, as the, you know, as the apostle Peter. All right. So here we go. Hello to everybody out there in this great big world. This is your brother Dana, and I'm coming to you from the city of Atlanta, speaking truth regardless. And I want to make this quick, but I, I have a question for you, my white evangelical family members that I really would like some understanding for me. As you all know, I spent the first good 20, 23 years or so of my life living in the white, the palace of white supremacy underneath white evangelical Christianity. And so I know what goes on truly in this palace. Mm. And so I am asking you, what has changed that has caused you to change your viewpoint on this man, Trump, and the viewpoint that you had 
Back in those days, way before he became to rise up to be your president, your choice words for him, I will not repeat. But would be upset to say, yeah, because that SOB has money. He can do whatever the hell he wants because he can pay his way out. But, oh, if that happened to us for $50, they would send our ass to jail. To now a man that you believe his business operations are 100% perfect. And in hip, fact, hip critical and, because and, and of his double -minded perfection, people. the entire court systems and FBI systems and... And, and all these systems. So well, basically what he's pointing out is the fact that, you know, Trump had a bunch of unsavory business dealings and, you know, he, he became bankrupt and, and, and num numerous amount of times. He, he, first of all, he became rich off of prostitution money. His, his father left him, you know, his, his first uh, low level millions, but from basically from, from ill dealings and prostitutions from overseas. So that's how he got his wealth. Uh, unrighteously anyway and then secondly you know his businesses he, he went I think he went bankrupt twice you know failed marriages and you know and all that other thing but but be but being able to manipulate a very corrupt system which was set in place for people that that like him that looked like him in the first place um, he was able to manipulate his way and and get out of a lot of things and become wealthy again and what they were complaining is, is that that wouldn't have happened for them and then they turned around later on and uh, and and all of a sudden he's this great guy that believes in God and they felt felt him to be you know a, 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 a you know a good candidate for presidency to lead Babylon. So you know just to clear up what he was saying. Have turned against him to falsely bring him down. The only other man that I know of that was an innocent man that was falsely accused to the point where they brought him down was Jesus Christ. And see, and this guy refuses to say the name. He'll say Yah, Yah Almighty. But, you know, you know, if you, you understanding and knowing that the Lord is a Hebrew, you know, it tells you in, in, uh, uh, in, in Hebrews uh, uh, 7 and 14 that the Lord sprang out of Judah. You know he came out of Judah, right? So this is Hebrews 7 and 14. And it reads, uh, for it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of uh, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So you know that the Lord is a Hebrew, all right, and that Jesus Christ are Greek titles, but he was not Greek at all. He never claimed to be Greek. He came from Jerusalem. He was never a part of Greek society, all right? He, he was a Hebrew who, who grew up knowing he was a Hebrew and keeping the ways of his people his entire life. So why are you just going to like, it's just like if a man came, came here from Africa or he came in from Australia or whatever, if he came here from Japan and all of a sudden you just started calling him by American name. That's basically what, what these people are doing, you know? And the reason they do that is because it's mainly because of white superiority, because the name Jesus Christ is attached to an idolatry uh, I mean, ideology, and is also attached to a false idol and a false image, all right, which which made them and people look like them, the people of the book, when they are not. They're the biblical Edomites, all right, lying, all right. They set forth a crafty counsel, uh, that's in Psalms, let me see, run to that real quick, Psalms 83 and uh, 2, and it reads, for lo, thy enemies make a tumult, they that hate thee have lifted up the head, and they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may no longer be in remembrance. But they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. And then it goes on to name the, the houses, the races, the houses, the tabernacles. And Edom is the first one mentioned. That's the so-called white man. As a matter of fact, he's mentioned twice because Amalek is mentioned in there also. And Amalek is the head of the, uh, uh, basically Amalek is the ruler of the world right now. This, this, this current wicked uh, 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 world that we live in. Because if you speak against an Amalekite, you're labeled an anti-Sim. You're anti this and anti that. All right. And there's definitely 
now a correlation. What's going on? Because what I'm realizing is that as the end of the Gentiles comes to an end, when enslaving our black brothers and sisters here for now a little over 400 years has now come to an end. And now that he said that, look, because it is an end of the time of the Gentiles. All the, all the Gentile nations had a, had a time, you know, well, not all of them, but, the, you know, the, the major kingdoms that were set up and then all the little ones in between. And they all, the Lord is, 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 uh, is actually fair and balanced. So he gave them all the time. But one thing he didn't give them, I was watching a video that Keppel did earlier. Um, they were never given the law, statutes, and commandments, which is why all their kingdoms failed. The only way for your kingdom to, to stand and stay standing is to follow the law, statutes, and commandments, which we, the Lord's chosen, were not even able to do. And that's why we've been on the bottom, sc scattered among all these heathens, being on the bottom in every society that we're in as a result, as punishment. But the second covenant, you know, which is promised to us and the promises, you know, uh, as you read in uh, 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 Romans, the ninth chapter, when it says is to the Israelites, the Lord's chosen according to the flesh. Um, the second time around, those that's going to be put in our inward parts so that we will never fall again. So we're going to rule forever and ever and, and ever. Thus says the Holy Scriptures. All right. And the end of this kingdom is fast upon us. And, and, and the, who's the rulers? Esau, Edom, the people that look like Dana. Now, the question remains if Dana is an actual Edomite or if he's a speckled bird, you know, that's really neither here nor there. But the people that look like him are the rulers of the world. And that time has, has come to an end. All right. And this is Job uh, uh, 14 and 5. And it reads, seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. And thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. So there's a line that they're fastly approaching. All right. They're, 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 they're fastly approaching that line, which they cannot cross, man. And they know it and they're nervous about it. All right. Okay. So has white supremacy. And your last hope is that your now savior, Jesus Christ, Trump will save you from what you think is about to come to take down white supremacy. And he's he's in and, and what he said is true because they are kind of looking at, at at Trump like he's a uh, these 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 uh right wing, you know, Republicans and, and diehard constitutionalists are kind of looking at him like he's he's a he's a next Cesare Borgia who's who's basically for those of you who don't know, but Cesare Borgia is the man who who posed for for the um, recognizable, the most recognizable image on the planet right now is the one of Cesare Borgia, which they ignorantly call Jesus Christ. You know that he's the man that posed for the image, and uh, it was Leonardo da Vinci who who uh, uh, or Michelangelo, one of the two. They both did images of him, but uh, that you know that's the image, the Renaissance image, which basically was part of that crafty council, right, to cut us off from our heritage and make and basically. They stole our, they basically stole our heritage. You know, it tells you that in the Bible. It tells you that, uh, as a matter of fact, let me find that in Lamentation. I believe it's Lamentations 5 and 2, if I'm not mistaken. It was in there a few times, but I'm pretty sure it's there. This is Lamentation 5 and 2, and it says, Our heritage is turned to strangers, our houses to aliens. So you got a people claiming our heritage, and in, you know, which are the Amalekites, and then those same Amalekites are in our land claiming to be us. All right? And claiming if they got documents and papers to prove who they are and DNA, which has been fabricated, you know, you even have Israeli scientists admitted that, you know, some years ago that DNA can be fabricated. And that's one of the things they try to do. They try to run to DNA to get around the Bible and prophecy and they make their science bigger than God, yet clinging on to the word of God, trying to make it them, but not allowing the prophecies that are in the word of God that clearly uh, speak against them and tell you that, you know, that it basically tells you that they would they would take our land. That bastards would take the land of Israel and would claim the heritage of, of, of Israel. All right. And it tells you that it's Edom that would do that. You know, it tells you that it tells you that. And I believe it's in Ezekiel uh, around the 35th chapter, if I'm not mistaken. And um, when it tells you that they they prescribe the land to themselves, Zechariah. Uh, uh, you know, matter of fact, let me grab that real quick. Zechariah 9 and 6. Uh, and it says, and a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines, which is the true name of Palestine. That was what the Philistines and the Philistines were so-called Africans, Hamites. All right. And, and that land and they, that land was Ashdod was taken from them 
by the Israelites during the time of uh, uh, of Joshua. Okay, and um, you know, and these people have set themselves up in in our land. All right, they set themselves up in our land to say that they're us. That, that they're us. And the Bible says that the Israelites, you know, that's Ezekiel the thirty seventh chapter that they would wake up. The dry bones. That's the prophecy of the dry bones. So once again, they tried to get around prophecy with pseudoscience. And you cannot do that because the kingdom of heaven is going to be physically ran by the Lord's elect here on earth. And the whole chapter of, uh, 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 of uh, Isaiah, the 60th chapter, breaks that down. All right. How all the other nations are going to be, you know, servants to the Israelites and bringing them their riches and their wealth. So how can everybody make it and share in it when, when all the nations are, are going to be subjects to the Israelites? You know, Psalms 2 and 8. As a matter of fact, let me, uh, it reads, um, Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. All right. And thou shalt break them with the rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them to pieces like a, a potter's vessel. So we're going to completely rule over all the other kingdoms, all the other hills and mountains. All right. And when you matter of fact, Psalms two and, and one starts with why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Well, well, imagining that they're going to take part in the kingdom of heaven, having anything outside of being servants and building it up for free. All right. Um, and anything other than that, they, they don't they don't have they don't have that coming. It's a lucky. It is, you know, little people here uh, where I am right now today. But um, but let me. uh. Let me uh, go to uh, one last scripture, man. And uh, this is Revelations 2 and uh, 26. And it reads, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. All right? Somebody's going to have power over all the nations. So if everybody can make it, you see what that makes no sense? That makes absolutely no sense. What's if every so who's going to have power over the nations if all the nations are making it? See, that's double talk, and that's that twisted, false Christianity. It's as false as you know as as, as their science, as their pseudoscience, which they use to try to get around the Bible at the same time using the Bible to elevate themselves. Double-minded hypocrisy. All right, and it says, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a as a potter. Shall they be broken to shivers, even as I have received of my father? And I, and I will give him the morning star. And he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And the churches were all Israelites. Those seven churches were the Israelite churches which were set up. Point blank period, man. The different camps. Those were camps. Okay? Which were to go out and teach and spread and create more camps. And that's where we are today. Okay? Because... This has to happen. Revelation 13, 9 and 10 has to happen. All right. And it reads, if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. And he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. All right. So that's the pa patience means to suffer. All right. It's with, we're patiently suffering and waiting for the kingdom to be established. All right. It's not, it's not not what the first things that the, the, the disciples asked the Lord in Acts when they realized he was back. He said, would, not, would thou now restore the kingdom? Are you now going to put all the other nations uh, into captivity under us that we may rule over the world and set up the elect? That's basically what they were asking him, but it wasn't time. We had, you know, 2,000 plus years of prophecies that had to be fulfilled. All right. Uh, we had to go into captivity and get scattered to where we didn't know and lose our heritage because in all the scatterings, uh, during the time of the Lord, we still knew who we were. All right. And then and then Esau had to go on his belly, you know, and, and go on the bottom. And that happened during the dark ages after the fall of Rome, when, when white people were the wildlings running around Europe, grunting, you know, not living in the woods and in the caves because all those castles and all, all those things that in, in Florence and in, in, in Spain and Italy and, and, and all and all throughout uh, 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 Scotland, Ireland. You know, all the castles and the things that were built, built those were built by so-called black people. And then in the, in, the, and in the late 1300s, the Edomites began to come back into power via the, the, uh, the Borgia family. All right. And then by the, you know, and by the, uh, uh, by 1492, they were fully back in power, man. And, 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 and basically, 
And then they started their whitewashing campaign. All right. Because, I mean, you go on the Internet, you go on, on TV, they're, they're constantly, even with all this evidence and all this proof coming out, even science, even their own scientists were telling you that the Scots were so-called black, the Irish were black, the people in the Netherlands were black, but they still keep coming out with movies with Vikings and they find them and things of that nature, you know, and they're still showing you the Scots and the Irish as being white people. And they're the after the fact people. All right. They after and then and then I'm going to the story of the of Cromwell, the Oliver Cromwell and his brother and their campaign to remove all the dark people from 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 uh, uh, Europe. All right. Oh, uh, they were they, that was their 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 mission. And then, you know, to, to complete the whitewashing and remove all the, uh, the you know, and what they couldn't do it they, because even though they removed a good majority of the people, um the relics and the evidences of their presence is still there today. All right. You got certain castles. They won't even allow you to go into because it, because it will be evident once you go inside that damn this castle here, you know, you got all these white people in this land and that are claiming that this is their heritage and their home. But when you go inside this castle that was built, you know, hundreds of years, uh, almost a thousand years before them, all the relics on the inside, you know, are showing you that, well, then, well, who are these black people? Why are they, why were the ones, why are their faces all over, carved into the walls all over the, and statues all over these castles? All right? So, hey, look, the so-called white man has been found a, a, a liar, man, and his time is up. As a matter of fact, let me grab my, one of my favorite scriptures and we'll close on that. You know, the spirit just keeps me, keep, keeping me going. I was trying to shut it down, but this is uh, uh, 2 Ezra 6 and 27, and it reads, um, For evil shall be put out and deceit shall be quenched. As for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome and the truth, which have been so long without fruit shall be declared. And that's what's happening. And white evangelicals and the rest of the world simply don't like it, man. They simply don't like it. Masculinity and, and order is coming back into the world, right? Masculinity is not toxic. It's actually righteous. All right. You know what's toxic? Toxic's femininity. That's what's toxic. All right. You know, so with that, I'm gonna give all praises, all honor and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, Wa Ababa Ba Kwam Yasharala Shalom.